two of us have had for a while. And we're using the National Regatta as our rollout to this concept and as to whether or not we should move forward. <coughs> I have reached out to Chuck Milligan, uh, president of AMYA, and we're going to look to um, get their cooperation in this process. Um, this afternoon, I would like to recognize Dave Browning, our AMYA Region 2 director. So, turning our vision into reality, can we make this happen? The concept is the development of the Lally Yachting Center. Whatever that might end up looking like, we have some ideas, some, uh, some thoughts about that. Yes, Chuck. Um, <laughs> but our concern is the preservation and perpetuation of the sport. Um, the location that we're proposing, wherever that might be, would house uh, museum with exhibits, archival research spaces, teaching spaces for building and learning, and sailing venues. So it will be an all encompassing kind of thing. Um, our concern is that um, there is no museum devoted to the recognition of what we do. You'll go around the country, you might find a model yacht here, you might find a model yacht there, there might be some sailing if you go to the museum out in Seattle. There's some kids sailing in a relationship with the museum, but there is no space devoted to this. Um, we're aging. I see it among us. I see how we move. I see how we hear or not. I'm very concerned. There are a lot of model boats out there um, that are disappearing. We have very few young people coming into the sport, like Jeff. And um, our fear is that they're going to disappear, they're going to go away, and this whole thing is just going to fade. Um, I know AMYA struggles keeping membership up where it is. Uh, that's a conversation they have all the time. Our membership is actually growing. Um, in the last two weeks, we've probably got six members. Um, we generally hover between 230 and 250. And um, I don't know what, it's people I don't know um, that have joined. Uh, we have members in other countries as well which is interesting, Australia, Italy, um, England, uh, New Zealand. Um, so the concept is let's not have this be lost forever. Um, I've mentioned these things. Um, the reason for this slide is this picture right here. This is Mystic Seaport. Do they have any model yachts on display at Mystic? Have you been through the museums? The model yachts that we're familiar with? They really do they not. They have model yachts, but they don't have them. They're, they're not displayed. They're yeah. right here. I, uh, Paul Opeka, the vice president for archives and library services, took me through their archival space. Mm -hmm. My teeth must have hit the floor hard. <laughs> models upon models in these wonderful rolling racks. There's not one on display. That, um, the yarl that I had out at lunchtime, there's an exact duplicate of that sitting in a corner. Harishoff's um, Her uh, pushbutton rig marble bed is in this thing. Nobody ever sees it. So we need to figure out a way to bring it together in one location where people can see it. It can be exhibited in various ways. Um, and not just vintage stuff, but all stuff, all, all model um, boat stuff. Um, so, it's an idea. The question is, is it feasible, fundable? Is it logistically possible? Would there be interest? Where should it be located? What's the potential? Um, is there enough support? Is it viable? And you could add a bunch of other descriptors um, to that list. Famous people have inv been involved with model yachts over the years. And the most visible, of course, is FDR. And I actually um, visited the library there. One of my goals is to build all the president's sailboats, and there are only two, Kennedy's and, and Roosevelt's. And Ro Roosevelt had all the ones, and when I talked to the head librarian there, he's like, yeah, we don't have any plans. They knew he was a model yachtsman, a big yachtsman, taught us kids on the models on the Hudson 
but there are no plans of any of the boats to be sailed. Um, <coughs> the Harris Schultz, um, does somebody have a 450 model head? That's an L. Francis Harris Schultz design, the 450. He designed that before the 50 inch model head. He had moved his um, naval architect firm to Marblehead, and that's when he designed the 450. Um, Norman Skeen, he was mentioned earlier today, and Dr. Ted Howe, a famous um, physician in Seattle. If you do any work, uh, research at all on model yachts in that area, you're going to find um, all kinds of information on, on Ted Howe. His whole personal collection was shipped to this and it's in storage. All of his records, all of his paperwork, the, the boats um, are, are there in, uh, in this area. So, what would the model yachting center have? It would have um, the sailing venues, and that could be a single multi-use pond or multiple ponds. Um, it would have exhibit space, museum, and I envision a whole lot of different kinds of exhibits. I just acquired um, a self-writing catamaran. Wouldn't it be cool to have that in an exhibit showing it going over and writing itself mm -hmm. and the mechanisms? Um, maybe that's a little weird, but it, there's just a lot of stuff out there about model yachting. And I had no idea in 2000 when I got my first boat that all this was out there. Um, library and research center. Um, one of the things that the Vintage Group has started to collect is data on marble heads, the designs, dimensional information. Um, and, and at some point, we would make all that available for research purposes. We have a little bit of it now, but not, not a lot. We're moving to get more. Archival space, and the more I think about archival space, the more I realize that's going to happen even bigger than I ever envisioned because there's so much stuff out there. Mm -hmm. um, I talked, was talking to Rod Carr, the sailmaker, about a month ago, and he says, Get that damn place built. He says, I'm going to will my whole collection to you guys. Mm -hmm. He has the first national championship RC sailboat in his collection. I mean, there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, in a lot of cases, when we're gone, and nobody in our family wants it, where does it go? I hope it doesn't go into a dumpster, which is not really possible. Um, a building and restoration facility, I see, um, I, I teach at Wooden Boat School, and there are other model yacht classes, there are a few that have been taught there since 1990. And they've done a nice job about helping us grow, because it's all the vintage related stuff. And I don't want to steal away what they do, but maybe we could partner with them to be an annex at this center with the teaching. <laughs> I see us teaching sailing the kids, teaching sailing the older folks, um, teaching building, um, tactics, you know, all, all kinds of stuff uh, could go on. Uh, so it be a classroom, an auditorium, um, a boathouse, because one of the things that has to happen with this, you need to have an active local club involved. You need the manpower to support it. Um, and, you can't, and you can't afford a, you know, a, lot of, a lot of salaries. And administrative space has to be located near major highways and an airport for people coming in. Um, some people said, well, why not wouldn't boat in Maine? It's too damn far away. It's got to be um, probably in the Northeast or in the Florida area, just because of the sheer volume of people um, and, and people sailing. Uh, of course, there's much more vintage stuff going on up here than there is in, in Florida. Um, where do you locate this thing? On an existing body of water? Can you scratch build a lake on a high, think about this, on a high piece of ground? You scrape the hilltop, you put a lake in, you provide water, and you can do that with a couple wells. Um, so you're going to have steady wind up there. Um, do you put it on donated land? on private property, public land with governmental support, um, an acquired piece of property. Um, obviously, fresh water would be um, a much better location than, than salt water. I just put this, these two examples up here because I happen to think both. This is an existing group of lakes in Sarasota, Florida. It's right, um, Benderson Park. If you've ever been there, that's where the Sarasota Club, which has like 120 members, Sail, they, they, they sail in these two ponds, um, can you still hear me? A number of days a week. Um, there's a huge parking area right over here. Actually, there's been a, there was a circus training tent set up there for a while. Still, there's room for thousands of cars. 
Um, this is, happens to be an area near where I used to live in Marshtown. It's the old state hospital property. This whole area here is probably 20 acres. Steady wind. You can site a brand new pond there with, um, with wells. So it, it doesn't have to be where there isn't water already. There are also streams that can, that can feed this. Um, the building, this is just a concept. I was working with, um, Erwin Schuster did the little brochure that's in your bags. And by the way, if anybody didn't get a brochure, we have extras, but I think there was one in everybody's bag. So we should be good there. Um, he called me one day, I didn't know who he was, out of the blue, and he got to talk to it and he said, somehow I heard about this concept and he wanted to offer his time. And he was in um, advertising. And he has volunteered his time to a number of maritime museums to help with their advertising. And he always gets invited to the galas. Mm -hmm. Twice he watched somebody pull their checkbook out of their pocket and write a check for five million dollars. Wow. We have a long way to go to get well, Hold on, I'll go ahead and do that. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have that recorded. <laughs> but, but in talking, we thought, that, you know, the building itself needed to be structurally unique, whatever it looks like. This is just a concept that can be, if you look at the new one that they just built up at Mystic, it's kind of cool. Um, visually appealing, designed for children of all ages. I can envision it on the main floor, a little waiting pool where the kids can make their little boats and sail them around with a fan. Um, just, you get interest, uh, family activities. Um, cellar, first level, you know, the museum store and all that stuff. And then you have levels upstairs, all accessible by elevator. Um, and of course, lead certified. Because if you're lead certified, you could probably get financial support for filling it, being an environmentally friendly um, <coughs> building. Um, you got the crow's nest up top, and you got the bills in the basement. Uh -huh. And that's just pl playing fun with, with, with the, um, uh, the names. But this is just us, uh, whoops, sorry about that. So I'm thinking about what the basement might, the bills might look like. Now I'm only thinking that that space has got to be a whole lot bigger, especially because of this thing here, because we're finding more and more archival stuff um, out there. That, all that rental stuff, Scott, ought to be in a place like this as an exhibit, you know, because he was a significant um, supplier of, of stuff. Um, of course, we have flat files. We have a whole cabinet, all the plans online, and then some. We have a, a flat file full of them. Um, and those are the, the plans that go to the engineer to get digitized. Um, archival space, a research center with both print material and uh, computer access. Um, and all the books that people have been asking about, I was asked earlier today, you know, where do you get the, you know, what are the titles, who are the authors? That whole list is on the vintage site. Um, and, and you can go, uh, go look at it there. Um, and of course, the teaching classroom and shop. And I see them as two different spaces, and the shop space might even be two different spaces because if, we, if the center takes on commissions, to make money, that space ought to be different than if you're going to teach um, people how to build and restore boats. Uh, but anyway, um, things to do: museum attendance, interactive exhibits, regular regattas, and they regionally. If you have trouble finding locations for regattas, if that was here, you could bring regattas to this. You know, um, kids' activities, fundraising events. Well, let me back up a second. The auditorium could be as simple as a projector mounted in the ceiling, projecting on a wall with chairs lined up, in, right in the space. That was uh, Irwin's idea. But none of this is etched in stone. And this is not just for sale but sail and power. What we're finding is there were a lot of power boats built. There's very, there are only three collectors that we're aware of in North America. The one guy in Canada who's working with us and two other guys in, in the US. Um, 
The guy in Canada has boats that go back to before 1900. He has battery, chemical, um, gas, and what's it? Steam. Oh, mechanical. Yeah, uh, steam. Yes, <laughs> steam. And he has 650 boats in his collection. Jeez. He also is the guy that had the article in the last issue of the journal about the Washington Model Yacht Club that he bought at auction in New Hampshire. He has told us that all those boats will come to the Model Yacht Center. Mm -hmm. So you could have an exhibit of 13, they're mostly A boats, um, like that could be an exhibit on the Washington DC <coughs> Model Yacht Club, which is no longer in existence. The, the model, um, uh, their club building is gone. It used to be down on the reflecting hole. And now the, the national, the, the police won't let anybody sail there because there might be a bomb in your boat. Um, and it would include not just our, oops, not just our classes of the seven classes of boats, but the A and YA classes as well. And that's over 40 different classes of boats. So I envision Another exhibit that could have every one of the AMY classes set up and every one of our classes set up with examples of, of the models. And um, how do we fund this thing? Startup funds, oops, misspelling. One dollar at a time. That's how Obama funded his election uh, that first time. Ongoing funds, big contributions, uh, a sugar daddy. Events, fundraisers, bequests, um, corporate donors, affiliations, all of them possible sources of money. And I'm getting really out of my realm of what I, I know about when I, when I start talking about the money, but through people that I've been talking to, some of this stuff has come out. Um, my wife and I were down here at your place in Delaware the other day, and there was this big kids' center park. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's got to be a five, six million dollar installation. It's huge. And it was a local bank that funded it. Hmm. Now, local bank, we got our hand up, um, but could we, banks, sail makers, and I, I, this list is not exhaustive. I just read out the list one day. Um, boat yards, um, syndicates. Um, Chuck mentioned to me the other day, the next speaker is TJ Perotti. When you hear his bio, you're going to realize why uh, Chuck said that TJ needs to be on the board of directors. Um, the other one that I just, uh, New York Yacht Club, some of the wealthiest people in the world yep. walk in that door. <clears throat> and Bruce Richter, the former Commodore of the Central Park Model Yacht Club, has been invited to their galas every year. So who does he know, or who does somebody else in the Central Park Club know that might, have, might get us a conversation uh, with that group? Um, how does this stay afloat? We know if Nick, Morky was here, Nick would tell you that museums struggle today, big time. And he's he's been playing devil's advocate with conversations on this for that very reason. He works at that uh, um, the race car museum down in South Philly um, all the time. Mm -hmm. And they struggle. Where they make their money is with gals, weddings, corporate events, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be considered about short term and long term funding uh, for something like this. Is it a pipe dream? Is it pie in the sky? Sure, but you know what? If we don't have the conversation, we're not going to know what's possible. So, where do we go from here? Board of directors, <coughs> begin stage fundraising, establish nonprofit status. This is interesting because I was talking with Ernie Mortensen uh, last week. Ernie was our secretary, uh, membership, sec membership secretary treasurer that Tom Alessi took over for. And Ernie said, when you're ready to do this, I'll write you a check for $1,000 to get this started. And he knows that he can't get that counted because we don't have status yet. But that kind of thing is going to happen. It's probably going to cost us two bucks just to get the nonprofit status. But um, we're, we're going to find that kind of thing. And we're going to have to engage some professionals, whatever that looks like, whether it's, you know, they, they help us or whether we have to pay them or whatever, because we certainly don't know how to go about this, unless there's somebody sitting here that, that knows a whole lot more about it than we do. Um, so the people, who are they? Who's president of the board? Give me a secretary, a finance person, somebody for legal advice. Um, interesting enough, Peter Kelly, the uh, 
Power Guy, Vinny's mama yacht, Power Guy in Canada is an attorney. Now he's a Canadian attorney, but I'm sure he has a lot of legal moxie that can help us with that. Um, dedicated individuals, idea people, uh, with varied experiences. Um, when we finish up, give me some names if you have some thoughts about who those people uh, might be. It might be people in our ranks, it might not be people in our ranks. Um, there's also a group of people who collect transportation toys, and apparently they're looking for places to give money. Um, so that's another another place to uh, to look. Um, so the financial plan would begin with startup funding. Then we have a couple of big fundraisers. Um, I'm seeing these numbers in the current economy that are changing. Um, so we need to create that income stream and we need to look at alternative strategies. Um, we'll need to establish the major areas of focus, uh, define who's responsible for what area, develop marketing strategy, establish funding goals, identify outside sources. And it's about saving what we want to do. And that is, I'd like your input then. What do you think of the concept? Does it have merit? Um, do you think it will attract people? Um, do you think it will attract regattas? Where should it be located or sited? Would you contribute boats, other artifacts, time, money, whatever? Um, I got a real interesting letter. It wasn't very complimentary about the concept from one of our members that was out in Minnesota. Uh, I won't read it to you. Uh, he's a guy, I think, who has communicated with me in the past, and his letters have never been very nice. But he's still a member, so we have to take that for what it is. So at this point, um, I'd like to open this to questions, comments, suggestions, thoughts, and I'm going to try and take some notes. Yes, John. Is there any reason to hope that uh, museums might be interested in supporting this or hosting it, like Chesapeake Bay or, or Mystic or somebody like that, or, or Solomon's? Or that's certainly a possibility, and it would not be ruled out. You know, the Solomons has had the club down there for a long time. They get a lot of support for what they do. But I, first of all, you need a good, strong club. I don't think Solomons is that anymore because of the age of the club. Um, when I, who's your um, the president Gary of your Island. club in St. Michael's? Gary Nylander. Yeah, I talked to him, and I got the feeling that the Maritime Museum wasn't really interested. Well, we're certainly not a major part of it, although yes. this might change the equation because we have more visibility than just the local group of sailors. But I, I, I think I certainly don't speak for anybody. I just a conversation has to be had with all the key museums. Um, Florida Seaport Museum used to have five or six model yachts on display. They don't even know where they are. Um, the museum, I was impressed with the museum in Seattle. And they had a bunch of boats and kids sailing. They, they built like a 100 foot diameter pond. And the kids were out there sailing and they're teaching them to sail. Um, so, yeah, I think a step along the way is to communicate. I know Paul Adeco at Mystic, you got to communicate with these folks. I don't know how much interest there is. And they're certainly not going to put the money into this. They don't have money now. I know Harrishaw and Mystic are connected because Harrishaw was struggling with their finances. So, it's just a matter of. You know, pursuing it. Somebody else had a hand up. Yeah, I did. Rick. Yeah, uh, there are small clubs up here in, uh, in Hampshire. And I've been working with kids to try to get them involved in sailing. And the town has been very uh, supportive of what we've been doing. So, you know, I mean, and, and Nashville's kind of centrally located between Maine, Vermont, uh, New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, it's just about the four million. Yeah, and we have our own little pond. And you know maybe I can talk to some of the people up there to see about what they would think about doing something up there too. Every avenue is worth pursuing. And I know I don't know how many other clubs are really getting the kids involved and trying to get, see what I'm looking at is I get the kids involved and the parents will follow. That's why I've been going to like boys and girls clubs and, and things of that nature to try to drum up the interest you know just from the. Uh, those type of clubs, so that uh, you know the parents will get. Because what, some of the people in the uh, uh, where we sail is like uh, 
uh, it's, it's kind of like a inner, inner city hall. So, you know, it's, it's uh, one of those things where it's a lot of inner city people, people that don't have the money, but you know, we can right. try to build things up to, to get it interesting. And like I said, the town seems to be cooperating quite a bit. So, you know, I might be able to approach somebody up there. Well, let's, let's talk some more about that. <coughs> I think Mystic is our bet, and uh, I've already talked to a couple people there myself now. I can't remember his name. John would know. Well, I think that's why we've got to get a core group of people together to begin to have all these conversations and figure out how we can chunk out responsibility and look at these different concepts to see if they can work if we want to develop this. Yeah, Great. Yeah, uh, this year was kind of, well, the last couple of years I've been doing like the STEM program activities up in like Vermont, things of that nature. And this year, because of COVID and everything, we we were able to get, grab the Boys and Girls Club, but we did it about a year before the COVID thing. We did a quick little thing down there, one, one hour. And the thing I